What should we build this week? What's coming out? What What are they releasing? There's a Spyro game coming out. Hey Paige, don't you like Spyro? Very well, Spyro it is. Hey there, fellow maker, welcome down to the shop. Bill here, and today we're joined by Paige. We've got our office gremlin, and she's very excited about a new game coming out. Oh my god, I'm so well, excited. New game. It's Spyro, my favorite game probably of all time forever. And we wanted to do a Spyro inspired project, something fun and kind of minimal. Not a dragon costume per se, but a dragon hat. And we're starting with this purple hat. It's already Spyro purple. We just have to make some things to add to it, including his dope mohawk, which Paige is gonna get started on. Yep. And then these really cool dragon horns, which I'm going to get started on. Ready to dive in? Stoked. Let's do it. We wanna make sure that the mohawk matches Paige's head contour correctly. So I've got this bendy ruler and that'll get us pretty close. We can start at the back of the head, right where it meets the visor. And then it's gonna end here at about 10 and a half inches. So if we go and trace this shape. So that's kind of your head And this is shape. the back? That's the back. So the brim is gonna be like that. I label everything because I forget things. So that'll give you a good starting point to start designing the mohawk, which will of course be made out of foam. And then I'm gonna get to work on the horns. Woo! And they have kind of ridges where it's kind of inset. I'm using this mostly as a guide, I think better in three dimensions, but doing this helps me get an understanding of the shapes I'm working with. That's probably what we're gonna go for. It'll probably change a little bit. I'm basically making a protective little skull cap so that I can just build my pattern buck, if you will, straight onto the hat. That's an easier way for me to make patterns rather than trying to figure out in two dimensions. This way I'll be able to create something that I can then put foil and tape on again to draft an actual pattern off of. So I can eyeball then, here's the center of the little button that's on the top there, and then I can use those to align. Boop, 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 boop. I want this to be recognizable as Spyro, but it doesn't need to be 100% inch to inch scale accurate. Um, this is gonna be kind of a fun Dragon Con look for me, I think. That's pretty good. I like doing it in three dimensions like this because I can see that I don't really like how this is blending into the hat here. It feels tall. Um, so I'm just gonna trim it and then um, shorten it a little bit and then just glue it right back on because I like this shape, but I want it to be just a little, little shorter. Kind of like that. I think that's a little better. So I'm actually gonna check my height this time and make sure I'm not going higher than I actually want to. There's a bit of a gap in here, more so than what we have on our reference, but that's why I've got tape. So once I get my foil bones, so to speak, I can then go over and tape and get more of the shapes that I want in between. I use foil and tape for most of my patterns because you can just sculpt foil like clay. So this is just essentially kind of bulking out the shapes just a little bit, just to give them some more form and help them be more smooth so that they're easy to trace over. So I wanna fill this gap a little bit because I can see on my reference that it really it is a smooth, direct transition. So I've already taped this, but because it's got just foil underneath, I can kind of shape it still. It's astonishingly like clay sometimes, really, to get that really cartoony bend there. Okay, I'm gonna pop this off the hat. Now that I've got the tape on it, it should hold its shape pretty well. I mainly wanted this profile here so that I could trace it. It's easier for me to adjust and change things if I can see it physically. If you're okay with just drawing it out and adjusting that, you can totally do that too. 
this isn't quite thick enough for what we're gonna have at the end, but we've got foam that is. So if I trace out the profile on the foam, I'll be able to just cut it and then shave it down. But if you wanted to, you could continue to bulk these out and get an actual three-dimensional pattern off of it like you would with a pauldron or anything else. So I'm gonna cut it off. So now I've got something that I can lay down and trace to get the right profile as well as the right curve. Uh, it's totally different from my original drawing, but I'm okay with it. That's why I put it on the hat. This was kind of the initial guide to give me a style reference, but I liked the way this looked better proportionally on the hat. Right, we just bought some more foam from TNT Cosplay Supply, and I think this is the one that I want to use. It's got enough thickness that I'll get the width I want at the base of the horns, but plenty of room to shave away material to get ridges and all kinds of shapes in it that I want. So I'm gonna give myself a mark with an F for front because sometimes we make mistakes and that's okay. I'll trace my rough curve and I'm actually gonna give myself a dotted allowance line outside of that so that if it's not quite right, I have room to adjust it and shave it down. More evenly dotted line, there we go. I always wanna have room to make it smaller because it's a little harder to make it larger like that. So basically what this will look like with a contour line is this will come up, this will come down, this will come up, this will go down, and this will be kind of a consistent shape all the way across. So this looks chunky and terrible, but this is our base thickness. It's much wider at the base than it is at the tip. So a lot of this is gonna get dremeled down and shaped down. All I want out of this step is to just take away materials so that I'm not dremeling through, you know, a huge amount of foam. For my part of the hat, I'm making the horns and I'm gonna make a 3D model that we can convert to Pepecura to make it out of foam. So I've got my reference image here and I'm gonna use that to knock out a quick 3D model in Blender. Blender is a free 3D modeling software. We'll have a link down below where you can go download it as well as links to some really good beginner modeling tutorials you can follow along with. For mine, I'm gonna start with a cube, add a little bit of detail to it and then tweak it into its final form. So here's my front view, it's looking kind of okay. Now if I go to what would be the right side, in fact I can change my view here, I can start modeling it in the other direction. Okay, this is our most basic looking form for our horn here, and I think it's gonna work out okay. I personally try not to add a ton of detail. This is just gonna get us close for our foam pattern. Next thing we have to do is take this 3D model, export it as an OBJ file, and then we can dump it into Peppercore Designer to make our pattern. Over here on my Windows base machine to do some Peppercore Designer, I'm gonna import that OBJ I just exported. That is the front. And I wanna scale this up. I know it needs to be about 200 millimeters high. So I'm gonna add that. We can tweak this later if we need to. But now I know we're close. I'm gonna hit unfold. I'm also gonna make sure that my paper is set to letter, which is very good. And then I can start cutting these bits apart. Join disjoin faces tool. And I wanna make this into four separate pieces. I can also get rid of this bit on the tippy top. That can go away and the bottom face can go away. And I'll just move those somewhere where I don't see them like that and they won't print. Now we have four pieces. We wanna be able to tell which of these edges joins with the other one. So we'll go to our 2D menu and go show edge ID and it puts a little number on there. And then these flaps, we don't really need those for this particular application. So I'm gonna go into edit, flaps, go to shape, change the height to zero millimeters 
and then click on my flaps until they're all gone. I'm doing it this way so that the edge ID stays there so I can still know which one connects to which one. So now I can go and try and fit them all onto one piece of paper. So I can just rotate these around. And that's that. There's our four pieces. We know how they should all be connected. We can print these out and turn them into a foam pattern. This is my pattern, but I've got to tweak it a little bit for foam. I also want to round the, uh, the faceted edges off a little bit. First though, this is the left horn. So I'm going to say these are all left. Of course, I can flip them over to get the right side later. Uh, the other thing I want to do is make sure that my sides are all matched up. So there are numbers on here. 15 and 15. So C, C, and then 6, and D. Now, Spyro's horns are faceted because he is a 3D model, but not this much. So I'm going to just kind of gently round out these curves and bring the ends up to a point. It's probably also worth noting that when I printed this, I actually printed it 10% bigger. That way we can sort of account for the thickness of the foam once it all gets glued together. These dotted lines here for the Pepecora file are where you would fold it. We aren't going to fold it, but we can actually use those to mark our registration lines. We just got a delivery from the Foam Fairy. Uh, that's TNT Cosplay. They're the Foam Fairies. And I'm going to go with this four millimeter thick piece right here. I only need a little bit. Mm-hmm, 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 mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna cut these out with a sharp knife. Got my knife here, I just sharpened it with my sharpener. Um, these edges where they're gonna meet up, I don't want it to be perfectly perpendicular. So instead of cutting straight down, I'm gonna cut in just a little bit and even more at the tip if I can. I'll probably have to go back with the Dremel to do that. I want there to be a little bit of a mitered edge there. And then on the other side, I'll go in the similar angle. And there is one piece. In fact, we can use this to see if it's kind of the right size. Boop. Up until now, we've been working in our own world, but we're here on the table together. Paige's mohawk's coming together very nicely, and this is roughly how big the horn's gonna be. Yeah, that's great. You think it looks good? Yeah. All right. You heard it here first. <laughs> that looks great. So later, when Paige is disappointed <laughs> with it, we can rewind and be like, no. yo, that looks great. Um, so I'm gonna cut out a little trench on these before I dremel the edges smooth, just so I have a nice smooth trench as opposed to trying to gore this in with a larger dremel tool. And it's a little small, so I have room to uh, make it deeper if I want to and kind of smooth it out. His are, are pretty, soft, but I'm actually kind of liking this angle that I'm getting in here. All four of these tips need to join, which means they need to taper down to a pretty perfect point. I did an okay job cutting some of them, but I did a less than okay job on others. So I'm gonna use my rotary tool and just kind of thin that out a touch. Channeling my inner evil Ted on this one. It's time for the barge song. Barge, barge, barge of the jungle. Glue your foam together. Our barge has tacked up uh, about five minutes later and I can push my edges together, gluing it and using my registration lines to make sure everything lines up. I'm gonna hold off on the, on the tip portion until I've got my other bits put together. And I should have preheated these with the heat gun and preformed them a little bit. I'm realizing that now. I'm trying to channel my inner Ted. I'm like, hmm, Ted would have preheated these and formed them. So this is the tricky bit, getting all of the tip pieces to come together. Just slow and steady. Um, and I also plan on sculpting this a bit with a rotary tool. Yeah, that, that came together really nicely. So this is where the horns go in there. I think we got it rotated correctly. 
Looks good to me. I think we have a good enough base form there. We can tweak it a little bit if we have to. Am I clear to make the other side? I would say go. Okay, good. Thanks, Paige. For the horn on the other side, all I have to do is flip this over. But I am going to mark it with the appropriate uh, references so that I know how everything goes together. This one is the front. A little bit of pre-curve in this guy is gonna help us when we're gluing it together. While we're working on that, I'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons. It's because of you that we were able to move into this gigantic shop and hire employees. That's right, because of you, we are helping maintain not just our family, but two others. If you'd like to join in on the fun, get access to exclusive behind the scene vlogs, early releases on all of our build videos and extra credit videos for all of those build videos, you can head on over to patreon.com slash punished props today and consider throwing us a dollar. Thank you very much for all of the support. Let's get back to the build. Okay. Thanks, Safety Bob. Super safe. This mohawk's coming along pretty good. Great. Uh, we can do a little bit more like heat forming on these, maybe a little bit, and then I'm gonna draw out the lines to carve in the, whatever these lines are. Grooves. They don't really overlap, just yeah, grooves. They're kind of just grooves. These lines are gonna come down and up like mm -hmm. this, and this, this leading edge here will be lower than the outer ones. I marked out where I want the, uh, this leading edge here, where the tip of those bits are gonna go on this piece of tape and then I can transfer that to the same edge on the other side and make those same marks. And then they kind of V up, so I'll use the same piece of tape here, but I will uh, change where those lines are. So if I want these to go up, this one needs to be a little higher. We'll just make them all a little higher. That, and that's kind of the same there. And then this will get flopped over to this edge, and I'll do the same thing. Now I can use those same marks. Mark, mark. We can connect the dots. So the front's pretty much figured out. Now I'm just gonna take this line, the same, the same ones as the sides, and just copy them onto the back. There, there. There we go, there's our grooves. I will draw more and Paige can do some wood burning. I wanna put something more solid in here to help it keep its form and to glue it down to the hat. So I'm gonna cut that out of this thicker piece of foam. So I'm just gonna trace the outline of this with a pen on both sides. I'm just gonna mark a corner. Let's go with the front one, which is this one here, that's A. And then I need to remove the thickness of this. So I'm gonna go with about four millimeters, which is that thickness. Inside that edge I just traced. And then I'm gonna cut this out with a slight taper to help it fit in there better. There we go. I do need a bend in this to match that. So this, this corner and this corner, I'm gonna cut just a line from corner to corner, not all the way through, but just enough for it to bend. And then hopefully that should help us. There we go, did a little tweaking, and I think we should be okay, just like so. So I'll try and make a little bit of a gap there and just put a little bit of hot glue in the seam. And then I can press this together like that. And any of that squeeze out, it's a little hot, you know, be really careful, but you can do that and then kind of peel it off your finger. Be careful if you try that. Really easy to burn your fingers. You could also trim that off after it's cooled down, but I'm impatient. We've got the lines marked out and we're gonna use a wood burning tool and put these grooves in that we see here in the reference. We're doing this instead of using like an X-Acto blade and heating it because of the angle. These have like a little bit of an in cut to them and I think it'd be harder to get that look with a blade and a Dremel and all of that. So we're just gonna do this guy, which should get us the perfect shaped groove right off the bat. And it's really easy to get in these little nicks and other kind of details that you see in there. And we're gonna wear a respirator because this is very hot. This is foam. When you put those two things together, you get vapors that should not go in your lungs. We're 
we're going to do a little bit of heat sealing, but we're gonna use a blowtorch. And to do that, I've got an X-Acto knife with a metal handle so I don't melt it. I'm gonna mash that into part of it that is not important. And then I can safely kiss this with fire gently to get rid of any of the fuzzy bits that are on there and uh, smooth up that surface. So I'll give awesome. it a go and then you give it a go uh, and then you can make this again. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do fine. You just really wanna make sure you're going across it and you're not stopping on it because then you will torch whatever part you're hitting. But you can see this part is much smoother compared to over here. So I was a little enthusiastic when cutting these grooves. You can see now that we've heated it, I've got a lot of lines in here. As an extra step, I can come in with quick seal and just kind of fill in these spots a little bit more. So you just did a little bit. You don't need very much. I'm being a little enthusiastic, so I've got some pretty big gaps in here. And you can smooth it with water. And you really don't wanna leave too much on the foam. But when it dries, it's a little bit flexible, unlike other materials like Bondo or other spot fillers that tend to be more rigid. And so it works really nicely with foam. We're planning on sealing these with some creature cast neoprene rubber, uh, but to hold it, I'm gonna poke a hole in the bottom of it, like that. And then I've got this fella here that I can screw in, and that way I've got a nice handle, but also while it's drying, I can hang it from this, like so. It is time to seal our foam, and also we could add a little color. So we've got our neoprene rubber here. This is Creature Cast, the brand. Uh, I'm gonna mix that in a jar with a little bit of paint. I just have some yellow acrylic paint. We'll mix them together and then we can start brushing. So when this stuff dries, one, it becomes rubber, so it's you can't really spread it once it starts to dry. But also, it even though it's white, it actually dries transparent. So this yellow should come through almost exactly that vibrant after drying, even though it won't look like that in the cup. So this is pretty thin, and uh, we're gonna add a little bit of the thickener for this, just so it's, it kind of goes on a little bit better. So. So that is thickening it up a tiny bit, and that should help us as we're brushing it on. This is layer two. I'm going in the opposite direction to hopefully kind of not accentuate all those brush marks. Uh, this one's going on kind of thin. I don't really need to get any down in the crevices. There's plenty still in there. So I'm just touching this up and then we will let it dry and do it again. Ta-da! Ta -da. We let these dry overnight um, because it was the end of the day and we wanted to go home. But you can see that the pigment in our Creature Cast rubber here didn't really cover all of it. So we're gonna do a base coat of yellow paint on here with the airbrush. We could sand this a little bit smooth, but this is the flexible neoprene, and there is uh, there are more rigid ones that you could sand. This stuff does not sand as well, so we're not gonna do any sanding, we're just gonna go straight to paint. Boop. We're having a bit of a pigment issue. The yellow just isn't covering really well, so we're gonna do a layer of white. Hopefully that'll give us a nice sort of base coat to go uh, over the black. I find that yellows and metallics are both really translucent compared to other paints especially and usually require more coats or a more prepared base coat. All right, so we'll try white and see how that covers and then we can go over that with more yellow. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so much better. After two coats of white, it looks a lot more covered. Now it's time for yellow again. And I wanna go with a little bit of this normal yellow and a tiny bit of just a little bit of red to get some orangish looking paint. Burp, burp. I have this fella here to mix it up. That is very orange. Let it be known <laughs> that red is very powerful compared to the yellow, which I should have known because that Yellow has already proved to be a very weak pigment. So I'm gonna dump some of this out, add a little bit of yellow. Oh, that's so oh, much yeah. nicer.
We've got our base coat of yellow down and now it's time to do all the final paint on it and attach it to the hat. I think what we'll end up doing is get a darker orange and add some gradient to this fella here. We also maybe want to go in and accentuate the grooves with more of that darker paint. We also want to add a little bit of a darker gradient to the hat. So we'll mix up some darker purple, use our airbrush, add some nice details to that fella and finally glue it all up together to finish up our hat. Yes, that was really fun. A fun combination of materials, store-bought item, and some uh, homemade scratch-built horns and mohawk. Uh, we're gonna have the templates for the foam parts here for free on our website if you wanna make this hat or if you wanna use these horns or that mohawk for a different Spyro-themed project, then go for it. Or even a generic kind of cartoony dragon project because sure. they work well for that too. Yes. Everything for that's over at punishprops.com. If you have any questions about this build, let us know down in the comments. Paige will probably be the one getting back to you. All the tools and materials we use will be linked down below. Yep. Thanks so much for following along. If you'd like a little bit more, we've got an extra credit video for this build over on our Patreon page along with. We've got some early release content, extra credit content, and the vlog over on Patreon. And they're all super fun and awesome and totally worth checking out. Absolutely, we thank you for your support. Also, if you have a cool project that you're working on, especially something Spire related, then tag us on Twitter. I'm at Chimbeard. And I'm just Paige, and I really just want to know. At Redbeard Props. Redbeard. <laughs> Redbird Props. We're pirates now. <laughs> Links down below for all of that. Thanks again so much for hanging out with us in the shop today, and we'll catch you in the next build. Oh, I'm supposed to do it right now. <laughs> I'm really good at filming, guys. <laughs> Make sure I grab the right one. That Water, would be, not alcohol. That would be <laughs> a bad time. Oh my god. For the other horn, horn. horn. <laughs> I hope you like my horn. Please subscribe to my horn. Buy my horn. Buy my horn. I just, I just say that instinctively now.